come for you today from a small village in County Galway in rural Ireland. I want to start off today with a question for you all. How are you? I'm not just asking this as a courtesy question, I genuinely want to know. Shout some answers out. How are you? Good. Great. Fantastic. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you for your answers. Since I was a young girl, I've always been curious. While I was curious, I was never one of those kids you meet at family functions. The ones who go, why, 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 as you try to get them to eat their peas. I'm now 17 and starting to realise that I spent my childhood watching and waiting to see what others around me were doing. To watch and analyse their behaviour, to adapt it to my own life. The eight-year-old Orla did this all silently. Have you ever been in a new place where you don't know how to behave so you watch those around you and copy their movements? I did this constantly as a child. It's human nature after all. When you meet up with your family and an elderly aunt you've never met pinches your cheek as they talk about that you're just like your mother, your father, your granny. It's true that children take after authority figures in their lives. This has nothing to do with genetics. It's behavioural, it's human nature, it's brought about by the treatment of people. Children's minds are impressionable. We soak in information like a sponge. I still do. Anything and everything I can lay my eyes on is absorbed, where it is meticulously stored, and if it's important, more than likely forgotten. My uncle told me many times as a child his stories of travelling to space, being turned inside out, and having a glass eye that he could see through walls. For reference, my uncle has never been to Dublin, let alone space, and, to, and has perfectly functioning eyes. Well, maybe not. He told me this so seriously that of course little Orla believed this wholeheartedly. As a child, I took everything my parents told me to be true. I didn't doubt them. I didn't ask questions. I simply believed. While others' experiences may be different, this is what I experienced. Some children receive good information from their influences, some do not. But what we are told, what we see, what we hear as children, will shape our personalities, our relationships, our lives for years and generations to come. These traditions, of our families and homelands, our customs, beliefs, expectations, are passed down from mother to daughter, from father to son, from parent to child. As a child, I learned my belief systems early. My personality was shaped. I learned how to act, how to think, how to react. But this is not reality. I was conditioned to learn how I thought I should act, how I thought I should think, how I thought I should react. I was stuck in an endless cycle of a need for approval, for recognition and for pride. What I learned from my community, my parents, my wider family, were the accepted views in Irish culture. My views on religion, sexuality, relationships were shaped and decided by my parents and other influences. At this current time, my religion is very important to me, but this is not always the case. I have attended mass with my parents since I was a baby. I remember my mother organising myself and my little sister into the car, handing us each a toy and telling us to behave. I have fond memories of this time, but the views and beliefs of the church were told and encouraged to me as a child. When I started secondary school, at the age of 12 with stars in my eyes, I met people who were raised completely different to me. They became my best friends and they told me about their views. Suddenly there were opinions other than my own to consider. Suddenly I had a choice. I spent a lot of time from the age of 12 or 13 questioning. My views on sexuality, on religion and culture were flipped on their head. I did all this silently, which was hard. For years, I renounced religion. Have you ever done something purely because it was the opposite of what you were supposed to do? At 13, I was, there's only one way to describe it, an angsty teen who didn't want to listen to their parents. I declare myself an atheist, cut my hair and try to explore my sexuality. I made my own belief systems, my own views, my own friends. I made all these decisions for myself. But I felt guilty. As I'm sure you're aware, Ireland is a very Catholic country. I felt guilty for not believing what my parents had told me, for being silly enough to follow with blind faith. In general, I had a lot of inner conflict I was working to through. At this at the age of 13, I had no idea what was going on. Sometimes I still don't know what I'm doing, and that's perfectly fine by me. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Here we go. 
During that period, when I was sorting through my emotions, my beliefs, and worst of all, puberty, but whenever anyone asked me how I was doing, this time I would reply, I'm fine. Remember how I asked you all earlier how you were? What did you say? You had brilliant answers. You said you were fantastic. You said you were great. It was incredible. A lot of times when I ask this question, I receive, I am fine. That is what I receive 90% of the time. Why do we do that? We're all guilty of it, I'm sure. I certainly am. Just before this trip, I was asked before how I was. I replied, fine, thanks. And you? And the conversation continued. I may backtrack for a second. This was the day after I discovered I had been accepted into this programme. Why did I say I was fine? I was going to America. Have you ever been in that situation where you want to shout from the rooftops about your accomplishments? Or maybe you're not okay. Maybe a family member has been in. Maybe you've had a bad day at work. Or maybe you're simply not feeling fine. It is okay not to feel okay. I don't want to seem like one of those metaphorical cat posters you hang in the bathroom, but I think we need to understand that nearly everyone has felt how you are feeling at this current moment. It is okay not to be okay. It happens to everyone. It is natural. I feel that as a society, we are conditioned to not express our emotions. We are told, be polite, don't overshare, you're killing the mood. I have struggled with this for a long time. A lot of my friends describe me as happy and responsible, and when I'm around them, I feel responsible for maintaining the happy attitude. I feel guilty for feeling sad. Why? Why are we conditioned to not talk about our feelings? To not confide in our friends, to not say I'm not okay. If you ask me here today how I am, I would say this to you. Today I am in America. I have been presented with this incredible opportunity to join FFI and I have taken it. Today I am standing in front of you lovely people and I am speaking. I know why I am here. I know what I want for my future and I'm not going to waste the time that I have been granted. Today I am going to say, I feel brilliant. I am not going to downplay my accomplishments. I am proud of myself. I want you all to think of a time where you accomplished something you didn't think you would be able to do. A time where you were proud. A time when someone asked you how you were and you responded, I'm fine. When you really wanted to say you didn't feel fine or you felt brilliant or you felt bad. I have a challenge for every person in this room, young or old. The next time someone asks you the dreaded question, take a moment to think about how you really feel and not how you think you should reply. Trust your gut. My granny told me this when I was 15 and it has guided my life ever since. So trust your gut. No matter how daunting the task may be, how impossible it seems, I want you to listen to this random teenager here today. You can do this. In the words of Nelson Mandela, everything is impossible until it is done. So say how you really feel, trust in your gut and follow through. My name is Orla. I am 17. I live in a small village in rural Ireland. For much of my childhood, I never asked questions. For many years, I followed blindly. For many years, I accepted information with no input from my own brain, my own heart. My personality was shaped by others, molded into the perfect image of who I ought to be. I was Catholic. I believed the world was beautiful. I had no opinions on the LGBTQ plus community. I had no opinions or belief systems of my own. <coughs> Today I am Catholic, yet by my own terms. Today I do not believe the world is beautiful, yet I believe and can get better. Today I am a firm supporter of the LGBTQ plus community. Today I stand here of my own terms. These questions I asked you here today have been questioned over and over again by me. I no longer follow blindly. I have forged my own belief systems. I have escaped from the conditioning of society for the most part. I may not be perfect, for nobody is, but today I am going to say, I am good, I am proud of myself, for I am always approving and will continue to do so for years to come. Thank you.